So in this series, we're going to show how this trailer came to be. It was a uh, the, the straight 4x8 flat uh, trailer frame from Harbor Freight. Of course, people build them up as they want to. Uh, this one's turned into a 10x5 flatbed, a little over 5 feet wide. Not much, but a little bit over 5 feet wide. And, uh, and it's a true flatbed because I wanted to be able to haul uh, hot tubs and stuff. So nothing much sticks up except maybe... You know, a little bit of edge here, which I may hit with a, a sander grinder someday just to round that off so that it's a true flatbed. And uh, the wheel wells are basically, to get my three inches of play, it bumps up here. That's pretty thin material, so that rim goes up underneath. And that's, uh, that's how I get my full axle play on that while not having a problem with uh, giving up a flatbed because I didn't want any extra wheel wells. And then I'm still able to maintain a pretty low loading height as you can see compared to the van. The bed of the trailer is still a little bit lower than the back of the van and generally speaking vans have a lower bed height than what you'd see in a pickup truck so it's much easier to load. And it's a, a modified version of the Harbor Freight trailer kit. And in the next several segments, I'll show you how I made it. And I'm going to discuss a little bit of a separate issue with uh, uh, Steve at Safe, Safe Arms Review. Okay, so starting a project here. Um, this is for the slightly oversized flatbed for what is normally a 4x8 trailer. Now realize adding more uh, uh, top capacity on this isn't going to allow us to carry more cargo. But does it care, allow to carry a bulkier, little lower weight cargo? And I'm trying to do this in such a way that I'm not adding tons and tons of weight to this. I'm I'm hoping the entire flatbed uh, insulation is going to go over no more than about 120 pounds. I think I'm going to hit that goal. Um, I bought some steel that you'll see in another video. Basically about uh, about 120 bucks worth of steel. I uh, had some uh, plywood donated for the project. That's this stuff and uh, previously used but it's thick and heavy duty enough that I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and this, this will become most of the decking. Uh, the way the dimension is going to work out I, I may end up having to cut another piece out. I don't know. I picked up this piece of aluminum uh, Originally, I, I only needed to have a little bit of it, but the only way they'd sell it to me is to buy an entire sheet. But it was a good deal. It was 36 bucks at a recycle yard. Uh, they don't always have deals that good, but I, I'll use a whole sheet. I'll use it on something. Um, it's the same basic stuff that was used on this cargo trailer, and I had a remnant that I built a uh, awning out of on the other side, and so I'll probably build an awning for this side or something out of the leftover. Uh, so I basically we're going to make a grid box. Um, I it's it's basically I don't know I call it British framing. That's what they do uh, 16 inch centers uh, each way. And so what it is is we're going to have a grid of 16 inch centers going all around this whole thing. Although when we get to the center, it's going to be a little off of that because we're not a true eight foot, you know, we don't have the exact same dimensions, but it's gonna be 16 inch centers on the outside as I work with this stuff. Now the main load bearing members are going to be this um, um, one by three. And remember one by three has uh, steel, has the same dimension as a um, uh, uh, two by four minus a little bit of the width. And then the um, inch and a half by one on the wide section you'll see has the same dimension as what they call the two inch side on, on dimensional lumber. So when I use this for reinforcement, I can orient it either way. I orient it this way, has a little bit more bridging strength. If I orient it this way, then I've got a surface area this equal to mailing uh, an edge of a 2x4 or 2x6. I have a surface area that's equal to that as far as getting edges of plywood up against each other and being able to screw them in with enough bite to be able to get two of them together. So 
on this first one where I know there's going to be no edges of plywood together, I'm going ahead and weld it like this. Uh, I, I need to be able to have this thing hold its parallel as I'm sliding things back and forth and getting it welded. So I had to put that one in that way. Probably the one all the way at this end will go in the same way. The rest of them are going to have that, that sideways orientation so that I can get edges of plywood uh, up against each other when I start dimensioning everything else out. Uh, when I work out here to the tires, uh, you'll see how that goes. But I have roughly two and a half inches, two, two and a quarter inches of, um, of wheel travel there up and down as far as the axles are concerned. It's a little right over two inches, a little under an inch of wheel travel, I, I, a little under an inch that the, uh, the wheels stick up above the deck there. So what happens is when I build the deck out, the wooden part of the decking is not going to be over the wheels. Okay, it's not going to be over the tires. And that buys me uh, a little over a half inch. I, I, they may call this three-quarter plywood. It's actually a little under that. And then what I'm going to do is have across the top is some of the sheet metal. And that way I still have a, a relatively flat deck. But for the area that's above the wheels, it's just going to be the thin metal. It's not super strong. Uh, I'm not going to want to roll heavy cart over it. So, uh, you know, we've got to be careful about that, but we're still going to have a flat deck as far as building anything up does. And uh, so we'll see. Uh, that was a big intro. The next parts of this video are going to be relatively short. I'm going to be making additional video at uh, uh, less common intervals. All right, cross braces welded in. Um, I, I welded it upside down so I could use one of the cross base braces from the original trailer frame to uh, help square this up. Uh, then welded basically the U-shape from the other end, flipped it over, welded back on the tops. Now, if I were not as concerned about sealing all of this up, I, I probably wouldn't weld it all the way around. It's not absolutely necessary, but it helps. It helps uh, maintain a lot of strength when we're really not using thick metal then we want to do it. just want to make sure we're securing it at all the locations. I uh, yeah, might hit a little touch up over there where that's still hollow just so it doesn't get filled up with uh, water or something later on. But I'm going to be sealing this too so you know yeah, that's how that goes. So normally on the original trailer frame design they, they want a, the weight distribution to bias toward the front so that the hitch ball is never actually lifting up on a towing vehicle. Uh, on here, because I, I work my four foot spacing from the one end, four foot spacing from the other, I end up with a little bit of a wider spacing here. And um, that's because I'm, I'm roughly 10 feet long. And I end up with a little bit of a wider spacing that has to be even on the tires. So what, what I've got here is not a, a less of a front bias on a weight distribution because the upper deck is going to be 50 50 at the tires so when i put accessories on a trailer i'm generally going to mount them toward the front now the other reason for going 50 50 on the tires i can afford to go to the rear on the on the, on the trailer I'm, I'm not really all that close to any legal limit on rear overhang the way i'm engineering this on the front, if we go too far forward and we have a, a chance of bumping into the towing vehicle on a turn, which is part of what happened on this other trailer, a previous owner uh, got that corner dinged up. So one of the ways I'm just going to deal with the weight distribution issue is um, probably one of these little trapezoid or triangle type shape toolboxes or something up at the front to take some of that weight. Uh, add a little bit of weight up here and that that'll be fine and then with a raised up deck uh, we've got a decent uh, approach and departure angle as far as off-road obstacles go because we're getting a little bit taller in the back here if you ever look at a Humvee ambulance or uh, some of those Australian off-road trailers they really angle up at the back and that's so they can handle um, a steep departure angle on uh, on obstacles but um, that, that's all part of another discussion on trailer length. So I, I basically center this. Uh, this is going to become the main center support ladder 
um, uh, uh, you know, kind of a ladder frame. The main center support for the upper deck. Uh, these two are going to be where I build out to here uh, on these, and then we're going to have a, a, a four foot wide uh, heavy decking with supports up here, four foot wide back here, and then whatever the leftover length is, I'm going to have to build, cut out, build a custom piece of plywood for this section here, and I believe I have enough material to work with on that. All right, next stage is going to involve welding this to the frame, but remember, this stuff is all powder coated. And being powder coated, you, you just can't burn through powder coating the way you can burn through paint with a welder. So uh, the surfaces have to be ground out in order to be able to get weld into them. And, uh, you know, it's not an exact measurement. We're just going to center this. But remember, it's a four foot wide trailer. I'm kind of doing things on 16 inch center. So at this stage in the game, we're, we're still using our 16 inch measurements until we get out to here and uh, so I'll keep going on this. Okay, so 10 minutes later I've done a little bit more cutting and welding, right? Okay, uh, no reason to do step by step on everything. Basically, I showed the two 1x3 rails going front to rear. These basically become the backbone of the trailer and, uh, and the main load bearing member and so they're welded to the original uh, uh, trailer frame that kind of c-channel stuff uh, they're welded to the original trailer frame at several points so this becomes a web of welded steel and then on roughly four foot uh, every four feet I wanted to have this wider material here in a few spots for attaching um, one sheet of plywood is going to end here, another one starts, we have a short section, we're going to do the wheel well a little differently, you'll see more on that later. Part of that required making sure that I would set this up on the wide piece where it, it straddles. My four foot wide needs to come in at about the middle of these things, hopefully I got that right. I, uh, I realized that, I was, I was working late one night, uh, on this had this one in the wrong position had to cut and redo that so that's just going to end up getting covered up anyway by the uh, piece that i put over the wheel well i'm using flat stock i think this is eighth inch uh, flat stock for the ends now normally that stuff isn't very rigid but what happens is that when it's kind of stretched a little taut and it's welded in multiple places here on the end of this uh, square tube even though that's 065, it's not super heavy duty stuff. The thing is, I'm, I'm reinforcing, I'm welding at several points throughout the whole thing. Then what happens is, even though no single piece is super strong, by the time they start all getting webbed together, it's actually very strong and very rigid. So, if you saw my original construction video on this trailer and saw how you could step on one corner and just shove one corner down and the other side wouldn't move here I'm stepping on one corner that's even you know relatively unsupported at the corner you can see I get an immediate reaction at the front and that's because with all of this web together it's, it's really all interconnected and so with that immediate reaction at the front all the steels connected it's still not super heavy uh, I can move it by hand I can, uh, I've got the camera in one hand and I'm, I'm lifting this to the other. Uh, it's, it's not super heavy, but it becomes very rigid as I reinforce everything. Um, I decided to go with rounding the front and rear. Now this is a, these I had cut at 10 feet. So we know that it's a 10 foot long trailer. The other thing I was thinking of was doing lightweight portable building sections that are 10 feet long. And I need to be able to jack the corners off of it. I need to be able to get the jack under that. If I'm using a high lift jack or jack with an extension, I, uh, I didn't want to put special fittings on the, on the little portable building. So I need the corners to overhang the trailer. And I wanted to go ahead with uh, kind of a bumper shape here anyway. Kind of do away with some of the sharp edges. I don't know if it makes it any more aerodynamic, but I think it's going to look better in the long run. And, uh, but I wanted to be able to have 
uh, 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 open corner here so that if I carry a small building on here or building section it's size to this that I can get something under the corners of it without having to have special fittings uh, but with this banding material it's plenty strong once it's been welded in so what I did here didn't have someone hold the camera for me so I, I was working alone um, hold this piece up uh, weld one end kind of weld the other it's not fully secured until you start putting a lot of welds in kind of grab and force this uh, just force it around I can do that by hand especially if I lean my body up against it before I cut it get a weld in here uh, I got a weld in at the bottom on both sides that's just a matter of uh, welding it here and then forcing it around by hand and then welding it here I did the same thing up front and then over here with a little bit of a tail left I'll, I'll be cutting that off with a saw and uh, use a, a, I have a metal cutting band saw that's portable I, I handheld I can just set that on there a little tricky cut but I can do that and then once I do that I'll, I'll reinforce I'll clean everything up with additional weld uh, I did three-sided welding on this stuff I'm not welding the bottom I'm leaving that open kind of like the ventilate if any condensation builds up in the metal it can just kind of drain out through the bottom so we've got one last piece going in here and the fender situation is going to be tricky but I've got a way of dealing with that uh, the decking is actually donated wood it was donated for the project and uh, what I'm going to do is set the decking on here in sections uh, just basically a couple of screws to hold it down so I can trace the curvature of this lift it off cut the curvature and then that's going to be my decking <clears throat> the other thing is there's not enough material here to support that decking so I'm going to have to put some tabs over here uh, around the banded sides I'm going to put some tabs or some scrap metal around there to uh, to give me something that, that, that supports the decking a little bit on those corners uh, plenty of strength from the side plenty of strength normally you don't build something like that unless you've got ways of reinforcing it so that's what I'm doing with this okay so 10 minutes later we've got uh, a little bit more work done right okay uh, what I did was I maintain the two main pieces as a rib with that ladder section that I was building welded on three sides I'm not welding the bottom I'm going to leave that open so that we have a uh, a little bit of ventilation of condensation happens inside of this it can just kind of run out through the little gaps that are on the bottoms of these things um, I ran out of the one by uh, the one by three material so I substituted in a little bit of my inch and a half by uh, one inch here stacked up some scrap metal to get the, the, the bed height consistent and I use that on a couple of sections here and it's, it's actually not a bad way to do it. In fact, the way the weight distribution happened on this, if I wanted to save a little bit on materials and spend more time on this, I probably could have made all these cross ribs uh, with kind of a compound buildup like this. I, I probably could have done all of that. It would have taken a lot more time, but I would save a little bit of weight on the trailer. I, I don't think I'd be saving tons of weight though and it's still relatively lightweight uh, there's a lot of steel here but remember that's 065 thickness it's not super thick stuff the corners are all reinforced by this this steel it's eighth inch steel it's uh, semi flexible okay this is the same stuff angle irons made out of it's uh, it works when you really reinforce it by having weld points fairly close to each other but I wanted to have something flexible so that when I secure the ends, I could just force this back and then get some weld in here. And all of these things started out longer. In order to get this curvature to work just right, you actually got to be working with a longer piece and then force it back, allow that natural curvature to give it some shape, uh, tack weld it, cut it, and then do the finished weld on there. So that's going to be kind of like a nice relatively smooth bumper area and uh, 
and it's going to wrap around. Now right here I'm not doing that because I still need to be able to have the option of changing tires and have movement on the wheel well. So that's going to work a little differently. And I'm, I'll keep going. You'll see more as it goes along. So a few more minutes later, uh, what I've done is I've uh, welded these, these side beams on using that method I explained where you know, we put these on, I, I press it in back here, tack weld it, cut it off, and then uh, weld it there um, so that we get a good smooth curvature on these. Is it a perfectly matched curvature side to side? No, and it doesn't matter. This is handmade. So I've had to add these little tabs here. I'm just using scrap metal for that. This is so that when I have the plywood decking that the edges have a little bit of support. Now, one of the issues to come into, depending on the thickness of whatever decking you use on a trailer, the thinner the decking material, the more support that it needs. And I could go pretty thin with this if I added, let's say, some skinny stuff like this and, and went in between everything. So the thicker, the thicker part is structural, the thinner part would be um, uh, just to add support for whatever decking, decking material I use. The thinner it is, the more chance of it kind of pulling and bubbling through. The thicker it is, the more rigid it'll be, the little bit flatter it'll be. Uh, because I got that uh, plywood donated for the project, I'm going to be using that. But I wanted to have the option of using other material later on. So I paint this with uh, pretty common black spray paint. Uh, inexpensive buck can stuff from Home Depot. Um, this stuff is only a dollar a can. So I, uh, I use that basically just to reduce our chance of rust over time. In a perfect environment, what I would try to do is flip the trailer over and paint the undersides of this. So you can see the undersides are not painted. I would expect them to develop rust, but not horribly, okay? And so at a later time, I'm gonna do that. But what I'm really trying to do now is get the decking on, get this thing in service where I can make a few dollars with it. And of course, we haven't done the lighting yet either. So the next step is going to be working on the decking, which will be a little bit of a custom cut situation. But now that I have these tabs to hold it, I'm going to do it. And I'm debating with myself over whether I'm going to have the decking go all the way over to the wheel wells or not. Um, or whether I'm going to go with my original plan of using thin sheet metal on there over the decking. In order to give myself as much wheel travel as possible. Another thing I ran into that I don't really like because I followed all the instructions on the trailer. The axle is a little bit misaligned, so I may be loosening that, tweaking it, seeing if that's just normal. You can see how it's a little bit wider here and over there. may not matter a whole lot with the type of hauling I'm going to do. It's, it's still a three-point, basically, thing, you know, as a single, single trailer hitch. Um, but that type of little bit of an alignment issue does accelerate tire wear. Just These are 80 PSI tires. I expect them to last a long time. So... With the reinforcement pieces welded in, the next stage is going to involve decking on the trailer. All right, so now I've got some wood cut out here. Uh, basically, two pieces of plywood, heavy plywood that was uh, donated. I cut that uh, short, the four foot goes wide. This, this effectively represents the two feet that I'm adding in length to the trailer. And then you can see the width that's being added so that I know for certain that when I carry 4x8 material or slightly larger than 4x8 material I, I know I can fit it on this trailer. That also gives me a bed space equal to a good you know decent full-size pickup truck and at three quarter tons of weight on a trailer I'm you know I'm okay I just don't want to get crazy with it because it's that's only a one ton axle and there's a few hundred pounds of trailer that, that counts against that one ton. So I uh, just kind of trimmed this off, uh, leaving a little bit of a lip on most of it. This, I, I had to get the links right here, so, uh, but the tabs are going to do plenty to hold that up at the end. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be able to, you know, look reasonably decent. So this was just a wood kind of rough cut on here. Not very many screws on this stuff, I use the self tappers. And then they're all coming back out. The wood's going to come back out so I can uh, paint the bottom 
or what will be the bottom with a polyurethane paint to preserve it. Is that absolutely necessary? No, but I, I do want the trailer to last a little while. Uh, I want to get a good three to five years of use out of it and uh, that's that I think will work for me. Long term on these, yeah, you end up having to replace hubs and axles from time to time, but not the end of the world. This trailer is going to pay for itself in the first few months anyway. Here we are, more or less completed. I uh, just did the first little paid hauling job on the uh, trailer. Uh, flatbed worked out fine. A little slippery for loading and unloading. I expect it to get a little chewed up from different loads. That's why I use a super thick plywood and uh, waterproof paint, which will be redone from time to time. Although I'm going to be doing a deck resurfacing job and want to use some of that Home Depot deck restoration paint on it eventually uh, when I have some left over from a job. And so these little cleats uh, welded in place. Everything's worked out fine. And uh, although I found that as they connect that ring at the back, it was just pressed together, but the rings were not welded. So I welded them, and then of course I, I didn't go through the trouble of grinding the welds after I, I where the rings go together at the back, I, I welded that instead of it just being together so that it would be less likely to pull apart under stress. But it also makes it where these things don't necessarily all flip back and forth easily. Uh, but they do move and get broken in a little bit. It'll be just fine. But uh, there, So there it is. It's a little over 5 feet wide and 10 foot long at the longest point. Minus the, uh, the corners are basically, you know, I can still load the corners. But it gives me a little margin of error, like if I'm jackknifing over or something like that. The, uh, that's the flatbed trailer, and it's a true flatbed, so the, even the tie-downs are all around the edges. They're not at the center. So, flatbed trailer project, all done.